We have heard plenty of the big story, the big picture of, of, of what's gone on in Auckland in the last uh, four days, three, four days. Uh, I think 50,000 homes uh, affected, hundreds or 50 or so have been essentially red stickered. We've had four deaths and there is more rain, in fact, falling a- a- as we speak. It has been a bloody disaster and a national emergency, some would say too late, but announced uh, by Wayne Brown eventually. Um, and then the media lost their minds over that. But I am acutely aware, acutely aware that in the middle of all the headlines, there are real people who have had to face some quite unusual circumstances. And I was talking to uh, Martin Devlin, who was lying in bed in the lap of luxury yesterday, um, and he said, I've got a mate who's got an interesting story about his experience during the flood. So he gave me his mate's number and we've given his mate a ring and his mate's on now. His name is Lance Burdett and he joins us on the phone now. Lance, uh, welcome uh, to the platform. Thank you for joining us, Lance. Marty said you had an interesting story to tell that was kind of a bad news, good news, bad news story. Yeah, thanks, uh, Sean. Yeah, it was. It was. Um, I was a little bit angry about it, really, but I, I was... Um up in Northland, uh, coming back on Friday night and, and got caught in a, what could essentially be a flash flood. And my car, um, I came around a corner, a blind corner, and straight into a, uh, a road that was flooded and had no time to stop. And of course, where was this, Lance? Car, so it was in the back of, so probably right out the back of Wellsford. So on that, that there's, yep. a, there's a coastal road that goes, you know, winds its way through. And it, because the main roads were all blocked, so I was, trying to stupidly get home but but you know everyone wants to go home in times of, of, yeah. of adversity um and and it's and it stopped and stalled and it ended up uh calling 111 and getting fire service out so hang on you're in your and car it, and it yeah, stopped and you're water. in you're in flood water Absolutely, in flood water, water's coming through the doors um, up to my, my knees at that point, and the car started to move sideways slightly. So I was a bit Ooh. concerned about getting. Uh, so yeah, I panicked, <laughs> and as a, you know, as an ex-cop, you sort of always told never panic. But uh, yeah, it, it was quite frightening to be fair. And it was wasn't and, a case uh, you did, weren't going to get out of the car. That wasn't an I, option. I couldn't. I couldn't. Well, I, well, if I got out of the car, I don't know what I was stepping into, and the water was coming through pretty fast at that point because the wow. you know the, the, the rain was pouring. I mean, it was absolutely teeming it down. And so if I'd opened the door, I'd be going, you're better off staying in a car that's going to float or that's going to be solid than yeah. getting out because, you know, you'd be washed away. Because I couldn't see where the water was going over the other side uh, of the fence. And as it turns out, it goes down a bank and into a river, and a swollen river. So uh, good move on my part, but not well thought so out. So you um, call, just, you're sitting in the car and you, and you call what, the police or the fire brigade or the emergency fire. service? Yeah. Fire. Yeah. You didn't call so, Wayne Brown. Why didn't you call Wayne Brown, man? <laughs> well, I'll be honest with you, Sean. I called my wife first uh, to let her know what was going on because I sort of didn't have... I, thought, I said, oh, look, I've just hit some water, but not quite that calm. And, and uh, can you call help for me because uh, I can't get my phone to work properly because it kept cutting out. And she says, well, there's not much point me doing it. You better do it. And then, you know, it took a long time to get through. So... Um, just because the phone kept cutting out and the car was coughing and spluttering, and wind- the windows were going up and down at the stage because the electronics had all shorted trickled. out. So there's a bit of a bit of a backstory to it. Um, and so, but look, I'll tell you what, fire service, what legends. How long did uh, they, they take they, to get to you, man? Wouldn't have taken long. Uh, they came from Wellsford. The, look, they would have been there within sort of 10 or 12 minutes. Wow. But it was a hell of a long 10 or 12 minutes. Uh, and first of all, this one of it, they're all volunteers, right, from yeah. up there. And one of the volunteers turns up in his big four-wheel drive truck. And he pulls up alongside. I didn't even know who he was. And he says, jump in. And I'm like, no. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm good, thanks. I'm the fire's company. He said, I am fire. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, and so, but like, I managed to convince him, can you just drag it out of where it is? Because it's uh, it's in a dangerous spot in the middle of the road. Yeah. And plus, I want to get some of the stuff out. Yeah. Um, and so they don't normally do that, but they were kind enough to, to do that. So I owe them big time. Um, so they, they hauled the out. car out. You managed to get out safely. Yep. Yeah, got out safely. Um, grabbed a few things and off. And they took me to the Wellsford Community Centre mm. where uh, the local community had set up uh, just a refuge centre, essentially. So I'm so What time weird, was this? I'm, what time was this, Lance? Oh, 11.30, 11.30 midnight by the time okay, I got yep, there. Yep. So... Um, I go to the community centre and it's it's just completely full of people. 
there would be a oh, hundred people with yep. families, kids. Uh, there was um, all sorts of people trying to get back to it. You caught between heading north and heading south. They yep. were stuck because, because the road was closed on both sides yep. by the stage, the floods. Um, and, you know, I walked in there and said, oh, can I register to, to, to come in? And she said, no registering here. Um, would you want a cup of tea? And that was, you know, it, it just it brings me to tears when I just, I, I can imagine. That's you know, the key we way, isn't it? That's yeah, the... Just, would you want a cup of tea? And I was like, yes. <laughs> yeah, I can do with a cup <laughs> of tea. It was the key way. Yeah. And then somebody else came and, and threw down a sleeping bag and said, when you're ready, you know, you get warm because you're all wet. And then somebody else came along with and said, oh, these might fit you, they're track pants. Because I was soaking wet. Yeah. Um, and a pair of all donated clothes. Yeah. Um, and then they had a cup of tea and they said, look, grab yourself a mattress, go in the hall there and, and, and put your head down and, you know, we'll sort things out in the morning. Um, and it, it was just amazing to be in that situation. The, wow. the, the warmth, the generosity. And you know those people that ran the community centre stayed awake all night for everybody that were there. And I could hear them, they were laughing and playing cards and, and that whole spirit, that was just beautiful. It was absolutely amazing. And to be able to have the comfort of, of people who were were in a good place helping others. And, you know, one of the things I noticed that the people that were doing this probably aren't the people that you would think would have the facilities or ability to do that, right? So people who were struggling themselves are there helping others who are struggling. It wow. was absolutely amazing. So it was a really cool So you cool spend the night sleeping yeah. on a mattress yeah. in a community centre. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, and at seven o'clock the next day, um, I I thought, well, I could stay here and wait for the roads to open, or I could try and get home. So I thought I'd do the latter, and um, you know, I got into uh, started hitchhiking down the road, got all my gear together, and and started hitchhiking down the road, and I got picked up by somebody who had recognised me from he'd been in one of my presentations years ago, five years yep. ago. He remembered my name and said, "What are you doing?" I said, "Trying to get home, jumping." So he took me to as far as he could, which was the turn off to the new motorway that they've got that that's not opened yet, the Poohoy motorway. And I could see there's a queue of cars there. So yep. um, he said, well, you can come with me. I'm going to try and get through the back way, Highway 16, Calcopico, which we know is closed. Yeah. And we and I said, look, I'll get out here. And he said, really? I said, yeah, yeah. And uh, so I went to the front of the queue to try and convince them and negotiate my way into a car thinking that they were going to open the motorway and as it turned out they weren't going to open the motorway it was locked it was closed yeah so this closed. is saturday it's isn't it thought. saturday morning okay this is saturday morning early saturday morning yeah and the roads are still blocked and, and there would be look there'd be 200 cars there yeah queued up just sitting waiting and the front of it was a, a young man sitting on the side of the road absolutely hysterical it was his wedding day Oh, and man. and here's a road that was open that they could have opened and they didn't. Yeah, like and it was just, so anyway. So the first thing I did was um, walk up to the cops, being an ex-cop myself. I thought I could probably convince something and to see what's yeah. going on. They weren't that helpful, I must say. In fact, very disappointed. And then I, a fire service, another fire service guy, re- recognised me from a presentation I'd done with them, and he said, "G'day, Lance. Let's see you negotiate this one, mate." <laughs> and to to get the road open and uh, and as it turned out um, it was only open. These two fire service were actually supposed to be in Auckland uh, as part of the emergency response team and they couldn't get through. So they gave them an escort and he was kind enough to say, look, just jump in the car, mate. We'll get you home. Um, and that's uh, just humanity in that. The so what time did you get sister. home? Uh, nine, nine thirty, about nine thirty. In the, the morning. So I was very lucky in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well done. How cool is that? How cool is that? Okay, so that's the um, good news part of this story. You hit the yeah, fortune, yeah. Uh, you got taken care of, and the milk of human kindness creates a river that you get home on. That is lovely. Was that's your wife it. happy to see you? Absolutely. Good. That's, I was happy to see her. Mm. <laughs> it's probably the, the big thing, right? And, you know, the old tears in the eye stuff. Yeah. Um, and, and they were pleased to have me back home and safe because, of course, they had no, I had no phone contact with them for quite a bit of the time yeah. during this whole yeah. this whole drama. Um, and so um, I could call later on that day. In fact, the next day, so it would have been Sunday. I, I phoned the insurance company and said, look, here's the car. It's been abandoned. It doesn't work, et cetera. And, and, and you know, I said, you're gonna have to, you have to get it towed and it's in a dangerous place. So on the Sunday, I get a phone call from police saying, um, 
we found your car on the side of the road. Um, uh, what's happened? Because they, you know, obviously it didn't get reported to them. And I, so I told them the story. And I said to the cop, I said, um, look, is there anything in there? Is there? I've got to secure the items that are in there because they're quite personal to me. And he said, mate, the only thing that was in there was your business card, and that's why we knew to call you. He said, it's been cleaned out. What was in there, Lance? And that, just look, there was nothing of any value at all. In a monetary terms, it was it was it was valueless, right? But in uh, personal, emotional, that whole um, sentimental terms, invaluable. They were items that were given to me. I try, I drive a lot, Sean. I drive mm. across the country uh, a lot, mm. and so um, you know there was a, there was a pair of just a simple pair of gloves that my eldest daughter had given to me because I I have. Um, uh, short story is I, I have a problem with, with circulation and my hands get cold. Yeah. And so she'd, get, she'd gone out and, and, and sourced these and it was they were absolutely amazing. There was a torch that um, I'd brought from my, my wife and I in our room and it was so bright that we couldn't use it. So I threw that in the car. There was a belt that I'd brought in from a shop in Hamilton. They'd actually opened up the store for me. I arrived in Hamilton one. Okay, so, and so, so, so basically, so and this stuff hadn't washed out of the car. Someone no, in the was, middle uh, of a natural disaster... Yeah. Had broken into your That's flood it. stranded car and nicked stuff out of it, and they and cleaned it out. There was an umbrella that was given to me by Naitahu um, uh, as, as a gift when I was down doing a gig. There. All these things that they took had a, a personal attachment to it, you know. And as an ex cop, you know, and, and when I first joined the, the police, I used to turn up at burglaries and things like that, and you know, people would say. Oh, you know, it's not that; it's the photos, and it's it's the it can't be replaced. And I was, I, I would always, you know, I'd pull up my heartstrings. I've never been in that sort of situation. Now, now, I, look, Sean, the purpose of this call, I guess, is not to say that you know, oh, you lost a few items. I, I can go out and buy them, but it's that emotional attachment. But then the worst part of it is, is that I've seen both sides of humanity. I've seen humanity and inhumanity. A car on the side of the road and some people decided to, uh, and, and, and it wouldn't have been Mike because there was another car I noticed as I was getting taken away, uh, another car had been in the same situation. So they would have gone through both those cars and cleaned them out. You know, when people are down, don't kick them. Yeah, I agree. Hey, what do you make, and, and Lance, I'm getting lots of texts in, um, and I know you're something of a celebrity, but just fill in those who <laughs> don't know as to what you do. Oh, look, I um, believe it or not, I, I do. We, we call it coping skills, so resilience programs for people. So a lot of it is around communication, so de-escalation and, and that. But I do a lot of work in the community, um, and, and, and on a lot of occasions for free. Um, I run presentations on how to deal with uh, people who are struggling, how to deal with things you're struggling yourself. So uh, mm-hmm. just simple, practical, based on. I mean, neuroscience. So they're all yeah. legitimate, and I travel the country doing it uh, yeah. and helping people out. Yeah. Um, Lance, interesting. So while you were, I guess, riding a bit of a roller coaster in terms of what you think of your fellow man, and, and I'd have to say on your story, come on, humanity comes out in, in the credit column. Um, far more people helped you and were good to you than That's the drop kicks who broke into your car. Um, but I don't know if you'd followed the media, and we talked about this on the platform yesterday, the news media seemed obsessed for a couple of days about kicking the hell out of Wayne Brown because he didn't uh, announce yep. the state of emergency when they wanted. And I said on the program yesterday, that struck me as a wholly un-Kiwi response to someone in a position of authority maybe struggling with a job. My instinct is to help them out, give them a hand, rather than yep, sit there yep. on the sidelines and go, useless bugger. Yep. No, no, um, uh, I'm, I'm with you, Sean. Uh, look, there was some, some horrid comments coming out on, uh, on social media. And uh, look, for, for all that's happened, that, that's to be done later. But when a person, you could see that uh, he's not skilled in communication skills. That's yeah. as simple as that. Should he have shown empathy? Yes. Um, but he didn't have a communications team behind him. Yeah. And so um, he's a person who who just speaks from what he's thinking, right? Yeah. Uh, he was, he, behind the scenes, he was getting, I work with Auckland Council, I'm, I, I'm, yeah. I contracted them for their staff. Um, the specialists involved in this were the ones making the decision 
yes, he's a politician, and a, but you know, do we want a politician uh, in charge of our city, or do we want somebody that does action, that, that that's a business person that does thinking? And I, I kind of felt sorry for for Wayne Brown. In fact, I did feel sorry for him. Uh, he's just overwhelmed with yeah. things. He's he's uh, a person who needs to sit in a room with a, uh, three or four people, get some advice, and say, right, this is what we're doing, and that's what he was doing. Uh, and wasn't fronting the media. Well, you know, for me, that's what I'd rather see in a, in a mayor. That's a personal perspective. Yeah, yeah. Somebody who's there and logically thinks things through. I don't want an orator. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you want an orator, you can get um, Sean Plunkett to come and, and, and front the media, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I suppose so. <laughs> uh, I'm not standing um, for I, office. I want, I want, somebody, I want, yeah. <laughs> I want somebody who's going to uh, be able to make some decisions. Look, the decision, it's not his as to whether it should be a state of emergency. It's not his decision. He can yeah. recommend it, but it's the emergency response teams that are the ones that make the determination whether it should or should not be conducted. And he was talking to uh, the Prime Minister um, throughout the night. Yeah. And yeah. so, you know, when all these details come out, you think, oh, I see what's happened here. Yeah, it's unfair to kick people when they're down. Like, this is this is our second... Auckland, we were locked down the longest in the country, and now we're getting hit with a storm, and there's another one coming. It's pouring down here right now, Yeah. and it's another red warning coming through at 4 o'clock, which is going to last overnight again. So we're going to have another wow. Friday night. Where are you Where are tonight. you calling from, Lance? Are you at home? I'm lucky. I'm up in Odua, which is uh, a yeah. beach plant, uh, and yeah, we're right next to an estuary, so we're quite... Uh, quite fortunate that um you know we're in an, we're slightly elevated it's going to take a hell of a lot of rain to to flood us out yeah. but our, our road did flood our road was blocked off um on the friday yeah. so and, and there will be some houses that will get damaged if it happens again yeah. but it's uh and, yeah, and you know everyone's everyone's back into pandemic mode to be fair sean here yeah because we've that's uh, been told sad. to stay home we've been yeah. the, the, where's the, the car the are and, uh, it, it's been towed to uh, uh well it'll be a write-off um, yeah yeah, it'll be a write-off, and so I'll just have to get the rental car for a while and then replace it, I guess, once they've... Because they won't be able to do the assessment. It's going to... Look, they're overwhelmed. I'm, yeah. I'm just one of us, just a few, you know... Yeah, there, Lance. Hello. Um, yeah, 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 I'm there. Sure. Yeah, I've yeah. only lost the car at the end of the day, right? Yeah. Um, people are losing their homes, and, and for and me... And their lives. Four that's people just, have died, yeah. Uh, oh, abs- four people have died. You've got to be here to see it. It's, it's absolutely... Hor- it's yeah. horrific. Yeah. Yep. Lance, thank you for your story. It reminds me that behind every headline are hundreds, thousands of stories of personal experience. Um, that's it. And that's the truth of a story like this. I'm glad you're okay. I'm glad your wife is happy. As I said, you don't care about the car. And to whomever, Lance, whomever was desperate and morally repugnant enough to have broken into your car and take that stuff, it would be nice to think they might give it back or they might. I don't know, learn something from the crappy thing well, they've yeah. done. Mm. Maybe they could pass those items on to somebody that need it. Yeah, yeah, well said, Lance. I thank you for, you, for joining us this morning and good luck. I uh, hope you get back yeah. to work soon. That is Lance Burdett, former cop, guy who does a sort of resolution motivational speaking.